Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I want to review all the different ways that you can utilize URL links in a Power BI report. As you can see in front of you, there are a few different ways between a table or matrix visual, as well as some objects on the page that can all be utilized to provide a URL click through to open up a new tab or page that's related to any of the information or content contained within the report. So I want to walk us through Power BI and each of the different types of objects you can have on the page and ways you can also create or grab URLs from the model using a bit of DAX. So let's hop into Power BI and get started. So as an overview, before we go into the demo, I will start by outlining all of the different ways that URLs can be incorporated. The ones that you will most commonly see will probably be either in a table where you have a URL link like you see here, where in this case, each of the rows below this is actually corresponding to over on the left, the brand name that we have. So that changes per row, just going to Google result. This could also be a product ID or a CRM link looking up a specific customer or entity or any other kind of an ID. Additionally, the tables also have options to be able to add a URL as conditional formatting to be able to display one set of information, but then still provide a particular link. Now, besides the tables or matrices, you can also have URL objects onto the page. So you can have shapes that can be a URL. You can have the traditional button that can be one plus an image. So now that we've seen at least all the types that are available, let's start with selecting the matrix table and walking through the design here. So coming over to the DAX folder and opening this up, we actually have two measures in here to give you an example of how the calculations are created. Now the one that I'm using in the page here, which is one of these columns over on the left, that is a concatenated URL, which is something that you can do in DAX. So let me zoom that in a little bit. And one thing you can do if needed is you can harvest some type of an identifier, ID or phrase or word or anything else that you can string together to create a URL that would then open a particular page. In this case, I'm doing a base Google search right here, concatenating just a word into there to have it create a valid URL. But this could be something like a Dynamics 365 base URL with a customer or a product or a region ID that could also be navigated to. So that's one way to use DAX to concatenate a series of text strings together to create the particular URL. And it's also important to note, it does need to be set as a data category of web URL to allow it to actually be able to view that as URL and allow for that clickability to then go to the particular page. Plus the table visual itself will require, if you look for a URL, you'll see that the URL icons down here, you wanna make sure that the values is turned on. You turn it off, you'll actually get the original text with a clickable link, but this on changes that to a particular URL instead. Now, in addition to this, what I did for the column header, I was to rename this here. That's actually an emoji that I used. So the windows key and colon opens up an emoji keyboard. And if you actually look for the word link, let me move that away. That allows you to grab the link that's right there. So that is how I was able to create the link in the header to then further reflect that this is a URL link to click. Now, in combination with the dynamic DAX string here, if your table contains the full URL already, as an example here, I do have a column called URL in my company table. Coming over to the data model here, coming back to the company table, I just have a column that already has some URL that we can navigate to. In this case, again, just some Google searches for the test data. But if the full string is already contained in a table for you, you can then simply grab the column here, add that to the table. You can see again that that is adding it into there and it will automatically default to first or last. In this case, it doesn't particularly matter because if there's only one row for that particular context for the filter related to any of these business names, they already have a single URL attached to them in the model table. So either first or last will return the same result. And once again, that column, just like a measure, will need to have a data category of web URL, and then it will load into the page accordingly as well. So we've seen two different ways so far to add it as a either column or a measure, plus more of a basic URL measure. So if you still wanna use a measure, but you already have the full string in the table, that doesn't require any concatenation, like the concatenated URL measure that I created, you can simply have a DAX measure that is using the min or max function, as we can see here, that then returns that URL from the table itself. Now, the last one in the matrix table I will mention is 
the ability to use conditional formatting to show one value and apply it on top of another. So I had applied that on top of the value for sales. Opening this up, go into conditional formatting, you'll see that there is an option down here for web URL. And I simply pointed it to the URL that is in my measures table. Either one of these would work. Additionally, you can actually just come directly to the company table, select URL, it will return the first one. So any three of those locations for the data will allow it to then essentially get an underlined value here. And then that will again be a clickable URL that you can navigate to using this feature. Now, one limitation in a matrix table is it can only be applied to the values. However, if you had a regular table design such as this in a flattened table, you could also apply it to any of the label columns as well for these categories. Going back, now let's discuss the three objects onto the page. So three different types of visuals that can be designed this way. So the first one here, coming up to the insert ribbon, let's go ahead and open this up a little bit. Any of these three objects under the elements, so buttons, shapes, or images can all have actions assigned to them as a URL. So this shape URL, I had gone in here, I had selected a rounded rectangle shape here, and notice that besides all of the style options and everything else that I have, I have a section down here for actions. And I have almost identical actions in this compared to a regular button. Some small differences, and there's a few more options with buttons, but the styling is very, very similar all the way down to any of these settings that you see here, which are shared over from the buttons. The one difference is buttons have states or shapes do not specifically, but they have many similarities. But we do have that URL down here at the bottom, as we've seen. Now, if I come over to the button, which was added up here, and I just simply added the information button with a bit of formatting. Now we have those states that we can see here between each of the three for default, hover, and press, which will give us those three effects to have a nice little clickable effect, but that will once again go to the same website that's provided. And then last but not least, over on the right, the image, which is added from elements, and the image icon right here. That will allow you to use any image that you have. That can be a GIF, TIFF image, any of a few dozen different formats, you can bring that in to the report and then once again have an action assigned to it where you can pick web URL and either set a manual URL here or once again you can use the f of x button to then specify from the folder for measures any other URL logic that is coming from your model that can be applied in there as well. So hopefully whether or not this is the first time you've explored using URLs in your model or you're trying to figure out ways to upgrade your report this has helped show you some of the art of possible that will allow you to see the different ways between tables or objects on the page that you can add URLs to allow for navigation of related content from your report. And as always, if you like this video, don't forget to check out some of our related content over here on the upper left. Otherwise, please don't forget to hit that like or subscribe or share button. If you really enjoyed this video, it helps the channel grow. And otherwise, I will see you all in my next video.